Good uh, morning. It's, you'll be blessed because you came. Yeah. Offer prayer that God will give you strength to serve him. Prayer. Prayer. That God will give you strength to serve him. You cannot serve God minus his strength. That's why you give up. It's not your ability. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Uh, wonderful. We can take a seat. It was good uh, singing. And um, title of message. Because you like writing title. The bottom line is that all that happens in your life is God's will, and that's it. That's final. It's God's will. Even what you are passing through right now is what? God's will. <laughs> Until you depart this earth, all that is happening, it is what? God's will. There is no shame in admitting ignorance. There is no shame to admit I don't know. Teach me. If we can learn that, 99% of your problems will disappear. Ninety nine percent of your problems will vanish. We are ignorant of many things in this world. Many things. What you know, don't think you know everything. No. Ignorance is really, really causing havoc in our personal lives, family lives, business lives, in fact, the whole entire destiny of yours. Yes, you have free will. You have that free will. Free will doesn't mean you know what you're doing. Look, look at your free will as it guaranteed you success. I can't hear you. But you got what? Free will. Yes. So when you look at your friend, though you cannot talk much now, just look at them. You can speak to them and tell them your decisions. Your decisions. For better or for worse. 
for better or for worse are under your control are under your control again please your decisions for better or for worse are under your control i want to you to think a little bit there hmm. i want that to sink in All your decisions for better, for, for worse, are under your control. It is only God who decides the outcome of those decisions. Only God, not you. The outcome of all your decisions finally are in the hands of God. Proverbs 19, verse 21. Proverbs 19, verse 21. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel, that will stand. Again. Proverbs 19, verse 21. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel, that will stand. That's the bottom line. It's God's will. Look at how you've been trying to do that, you've been trying to do that, you've been trying to raise that, you've been trying... All those things. All those plans. The outcome is in God's hands. And let me tell you, I'm, a, I'm laying the foundation because there's so much confusion. So much. Whatever heaven does is for your good. You don't understand it, but it is for your good. Don't rush to other people for this and that. What is God saying? Who has the final say? God. I'll give a very simple example. Can you all hear me? Okay, thank you. It's not yet nasty. It will be nasty. I, I promise you. It won't be comfortable just now. That's why I want you to come along with me. Tell your neighbor, please, let's go along. It will be nasty just now. Please, let's go along. It will be nasty just now. Yes, it will. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. So you open your heart to say what is coming. Oh, Lord. You enter a room and see a man with a mask on his face and uh, is having a knife ready to cut someone's leg. Hello? With a mask, ready to cut someone's leg. You, you decide to be a hero. You remove the mask terrorist and drag the intended victim to safety. This must man out you chase. The one whom you thought was a victim, you take him to safety. Instead of thanking you, 
the victim looks up to you and cries, why did you take away my surgeon? Why did you take away my surgeon? I have gangrene on my leg and need immediate surgery or else I'll die. How many times have you just rushed into a scenery and you concluded? How many times have you got your money and put in a bottomless pit? Friendship. Because he was wearing bright things, that's my friend. This will bring crisis. With your life, if I may ask, with your permission that is, why are you only seeing a portion of the picture of your life? You have not yet realized your full dimension, but look what you are doing with yourself. You are running from pillar to post. Those in education, changing subjects, changing courses. Employers or employees, workers, sending CVs everywhere. Businessman, businesswoman, I'm quitting this, I'm starting another thing. You have seen just a portion of your picture. You haven't seen the whole dimension, full dimensions, but see the conclusions. God is beyond time. Hey, it's delaying. Hey, I'm growing old. Hey, nothing has been working 20 years, 15 years, how many years. God is beyond time. He was, is, and always will be. Tell your neighbor. He was, is, and always will be. Again, please. He was, is and always will be. There's a good example in Exodus 33, verse 23. Exodus 33, verse 23. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Again, please. Exodus 33, Verse 23. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. That's God. When looking ahead, one does not see the complete picture. Tell your neighbor. When looking ahead, one does not see the complete picture. People have made blunders, wrecked their destinies, because where they are, to them, they should see the complete picture. Look at you, even now. Right now you are not steady, you, you, are, you are putting this and that, because right now, where you are, what you are passing through, 
you don't have a complete picture. Look at the mess you are doing. Tell your neighbor. Right now, where you are, you do not have the complete picture. Look at the mess you're doing. Look at how you are damaging yourself. Because you hear there, 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 your family member, your whatever, whatever, it's working for them. Here, what? Nothing. When you're looking ahead, one does not see the complete picture. It's a teaching. Yes, Junior, what can you say? Thank you, Prophet, for this grace. What you are teaching now. Louder. What you are teaching now is all about me. I'm not seeing the full picture, but I'm, I'm concluding. That's why I made so many mistakes. Stupid mistakes. Yes, please. please. Stupid mistakes. Stupid mistakes. And God is saying, my face, you can't see. My back, you will see. When one sees the back, after everything you have passed through, then you look back in your life, you cannot have any questions. You can't. You have passed through everything. You've got a lot of questions and all. But when everything is at the back, you cannot ask questions. Everything becomes clear. Thank you, sir. All of you and challenging those on television, you must have patience and wait to see happy ending. Tell your neighbor. You must have patience and wait to see happy ending. Again, please. You must have patience and wait to see happy ending. Uh, am I talking to someone here today? Yes. I can see your hand. Yes. Oh, oh, we thank God. Okay. We bless the Lord then. It, it's reaching the intended hearts. When you go to the hospital, you say there's this here, there's this, you point everywhere. After examination, it is only the doctor who determines the seriousness of your illness. True or false? When you go to the doctor, do you tell him how serious you are? I can't hear you. No. Who determines? The doctor. Hmm. When the doctor, I'm coming along with you before it becomes nasty. Because when you read, okay, let me say this first to, to ease your heart. From the beginning, we Christians, we've been missing it. Let's start with Jesus. Jesus was a Jew and is a Jew. 
Jesus was never a Christian. Jesus was talking to Jewish people. All the examples were not were Christian, were to Jews. Now that's where the problem is. We are lacking that insight. We have not reset our mind to say, this, he was talking to Jews who had followed him. But now we will come with tradition to interpret what Jesus is saying. We don't have a Jewish mind. That's why a lot of times they say, God has done away with the Jews. How? In the book of Hebrews, the root, you are the branch. And it says, always remember, it is not the branch that holds the root. The root holds you. So how did it get rid of the Jews? I don't know. It's just foolishness. To understand scriptures, it's both Old Testament and New Testament. All of it is one and the same. Is that clear? So I'm talking about this doctor who's recommending a painful operation. Wow. But the doctor is not looking or thinking about the painful operation. He wants to cure his patient. Are you getting it now? Because I say everything that happens to us, God's will, it will cure you in the wrong land. The doctor knows if I operate this person, it's going to add 50 happy, healthy years to his life. Avoiding the operation, this man will certainly die. Even if the patient begs the doctor not to operate, so as not to experience the pain, the doctor will ignore his request. How many requests have you had brought before God? Remove this, remove this, discuss. Discuss. I can't hear you. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Daddy. It's many requests. I, I, I eh? It's many things I talk about God. Oh, me like this. this. Me like this. Yes. Remove this. Yes. Don't do this, God. Yes, what and what? Thank you. Huh? Yes, Papa. Okay. And nothing has happened. Yes. Very good. Let's clap for Jesus. Thank you. Yes, my daughter. Now, can you see now how wrong we have been? Yes, please. Thank you, Dad, for the opportunity. It now makes sense. It does? Yes, because we don't see the complete picture. Thank you. You not, you not having money, God's will. He knows you cannot handle money on you. You who is married, having money, you are going to divorce. As a result, no money to keep your marriage and children. 
God knows the full picture. Tell your neighbor. God knows the full picture. Let's clap for Jesus. You are only looking at yourself now. Oh, if I can have another car, what I know. God says, this car is sufficient for you. The new car, we are going to lose you. He knows. Anything you force, you destroy. If you're forcing anything right now, stop. Stop it. The doctor did not listen to the pleas of the patient because the doctor had the patient's best interest. Similarly to us now here. All our misfortunes, if you patiently wait, we will have a positive outcome. Say it to your neighbor. All of our misfortunes, if you patiently wait, it will have a positive outcome. That is positive. You are so much in a hurry. You don't even know why you are hurrying. You are not even, but you are making decisions in a hurry. The outcome of those decisions are in the hands of God. We shall see just now. Why do you pray to have what you think mistakenly believe is bad to be taken away? What you think mistakenly to be bad to be taken away? Why? Tell you never, God knows better. God knows better. Again. God knows better. When mis misfortune, hardship, suffering occurs in your life, in your family life, in your friend's life, in your business life, one must ask the purpose, not why. Not why this, why. No, 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 no. What is the purpose of this? Are you listening? There, there you'll be steady. You'll be steady. What is the purpose of this? Why is this suffering necessary? Can you see? Why is this suffering necessary? I'm not against suffering. No, no, no. But... God knows why is this suffering then necessary? Where do I need to improve? When you don't have enough money, there's no need going to Machonesa. You should know why, why is this, why financial suffering. Not, I'm going to machonesa. That's not a solution. The problem is not money. 
you abuse money. If I may ask you right now, what is the purpose of your suffering right now? Ask your neighbor. What is the purpose of your suffering right now? Do you know it? Philip. Thank you, Daddy, for this opportunity. I think the purpose of my suffering is to, to cleanse me and remove all the things that I thought were good for me. So this suffering is redirecting me to what you are teaching us today. Amen. So it's good for me. Let's clap for Jesus. If all of us, that's our answer, we can clap better. May we, thank you, may we start looking at suffering or difficulties in a positive light. Don't just embrace people and say, hey, I'm suffering. Hey. Then you sit down with them and say, no, no, no. No, 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 no. You are not looking at this from a positive side. This, you, you are becoming rich with this. This is wealth. You are becoming rich. You are becoming wealthy with this. You can't pass through this and remain poor. Then you didn't look at it from the positive side. The struggles of life are a catalyst to perfection. Tell your neighbor. The struggles of life are a catalyst to perfection. Louder. The the struggles of life are a catalyst to perfection. Trouble perfects us. Perfects one. One who has gone... No, don't go to people who have not gone through trouble. They just want to eat this and that. Those are not good friends for you. No. No. Because all of us in this life, at some time, we shall have trouble. All of us. It's not only a few. All of us. Suffering polishes the soul to receive reward. Thank you. Tell a little louder. Suffering polishes the soul to receive reward. Again, please. Suffering polishes the soul to receive reward. To know a genuine child of God... During suffering period, he or she will remain calm. And their lives will be filled or flooded with serenity, peacefulness, despite life challenges. Despite Life challenges. You not even notice them in their speech. No. So
superficial knowledge, shallow knowledge of Christianity is not enough to face the challenges of life. Tell your neighbor. Superficial, shallow knowledge of Christianity is not enough to face the challenges of life. When you ask your neighbor right now, how are you facing your life challenges? Ask your neighbor. You how hear. are you facing your life challenges? Some husband come late at home, running away from dealing with issue. Some women, they are busy cleaning kitchen, everyday kitchen, putting plate here, pot here, plate here, just changing. How are you facing challenges of life? You are not dealing with them. Some of us, anger. Anger has never sorted anything in life. You need to have deep understanding of suffering. Tell your neighbor. You need to have deep understanding of suffering. Again, please. You need to have deep understanding of suffering. Particularly in our days, as suffering is expected, in our days, suffering is unavoidable. It's part of our daily life. Suffering. It's unavoidable. City life. Modern life. Suffering is unavoidable. You may look right outward, but there's so much stress in you. You may look all right outward, but there's so much depression in you. There's so much confusion in you. Ask one question, you're answering other things. You may look all right as if everything is together, but you are tensed up. You are boiling. Your life is always on edge. That's not a Christian's life. No. That's shallow Christianity. When things can't come together, there's quarrel with everyone. Let me introduce this world to you, if you permit me to. This world is a house of troubles. Tell your neighbor. This world is a house of troubles. Louder. This world is a house of troubles. Zax, what did you hear? Thank you, Father. I heard that this world is a life of trouble, is a house of trouble. Yes. It's unavoidable there. It's a house. This world, are you in this world? Welcome to a house of troubles. Unavoidable. And this is not taught in churches. They are taught you are rich. Now look what has happened with your riches. Look what has happened with your riches. You are going down instead of going up. There is no foundation. A lot of us, we do things to avoid suffering so that we look we are all right, but we are going to more suffering. Tell your neighbor, if today passes without suffering, if today passes without suffering, then tomorrow it will come. Then tomorrow it will come. If not tomorrow, if not tomorrow, then surely, then surely, within the month, within the month. Louder. This is truth. Do not be 
do not be sugar coated with lies. This is truth. Even Jesus said, in this world you have trouble, but be of good cheer, I've overcome. He did not say you will not have. Tell your neighbor, if today passes without suffering, if today passes without suffering, then tomorrow it will come. Then tomorrow it will come. If not tomorrow, if not tomorrow, then surely, then surely, within the month, within the month. That's the reality of life. No one wants to bring a subject of suffering in church. But people are suffering. Have you seen? They don't want to bring truth. People are suffering. Their suffering is in the church because it's where people are duped. Because in the church, they are saying, you are the head and not the tail. You should be above and not beneath. So when you see people, you are going to do illegal thing. That will bring more suffering. You are going to exhaust your bank card, whatever it is, this, that you swipe. Now Christmas is coming. I don't know why you even enjoy Black Friday. Black, not white. May we have understanding, please. A lot of things are not necessary. One who is a Christian and who has a clear understanding will surely be able to travel the hills and valleys of life. One who has got understanding a genuine Christian. There's no stop serving God. There's no stop, hey, I'm suffering. No, 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 no. He has a clear understanding and he will travel the hills and valleys of life with calmness. With greater inner calm. And this person will be a beacon for others to learn from. When you look at your friend, sister, auntie, uncle, are they a beacon for you to, to learn from? Discuss. When you look at your friend, are they a beacon for you to learn from? Can you now, you find your wife is troubled in home. Your husband is troubled, your friend is troubled. You say, no, do not be troubled. Follow me as I follow Jesus. Do you say so? Discuss. <laughs> Victor, do you say so? Good morning, Dad. Uh, don't say so. What do you say? It's, it's not easy, Daddy, for me to see myself suffering and the people look at me changing my suffering into happiness. That way, it is not easy. Who but told I've, you you won't suffer? Uh, no, one, no one wants to suffer, did he? That's deception. That's a, a lot of people who are doing everything in, not in a proper way. Old age finds them. And after old age, all the children that they brought up 
not based on truth, but on illusion. Instead of suffering you alone, now it's the whole family. Because suffering was supposed to prepare you for a reward. I'll tell you suffering that is useless. And that's why we're going to close the service today. The suffering that is just useless is just stupid. Foolish. And that's what you are saying you now. Say, no, I don't want to suffer. Because you, your suffering is stupid. And you didn't know it. Hello, Vicky. Yeah, you understand what you are saying. That. Huh? I am hearing you, Daddy. You shall see point. Why billion and billion or so-called Christian, they are suffering because of stupidity. Mm. And it's them who caused it. There is no Satan there. I tell you never. <laughs> it's them who caused it. There Thank is you. no Satan there. Oh, no. There is nothing. Let me, he has rushed me. Let me clarify suffering. There, there are two categories of suffering. That, that's physical and emotional. Physical and emotional. Physical and emotional. Physical, we see it. Even now, somebody can look at you and can say you are suffering. But some of you, the physical suffering, you have covered it very well. Very, very well. But with one who looks deeper can see emotional suffering. Because your life, your language at home or with friends is epileptic language. Tell your neighbor. Your life, your language at home with friends is epileptic language. One time you are calm. The other, ah, yeah. epileptic. Epileptic man. Epileptic, epileptic woman. Hello. What is, ah. Why do you have epileptic behavior? Outside, you are wearing new dress. Tell a neighbor. Outside, you are wearing new dress. Inside, epileptic. Inside, epileptic. One who has been with a problematic woman will not be judged in that area in heaven. He's gone already through hell. A rush on the physical illness, it's not full list, but it's part of it. Physical uh, um, suffering, that's illnesses, discomfort, flu, flu. Like now, they say what? This is flu. Can you say physical? Fever, headache, pregnancy is suffering. Tell Pregnancy ah. is suffering. You did know. 
and childbirth is suffering. Bumps and scratches. It's just suffering. Scratched here, scratched there. Weather. Uncomfortable weather. Heat or cold. Like now. We are suffering of this heat. This is physical. Hello? <laughs> Emotional. Bereavement. That's loss of a family member, loss of a friend, loss of a mentor. Loss of any individual that causes one to feel pain. What people know most about emotional suffering is financial stress. 21 divided by 2. Tell your neighbor, financial stress. Financial stress. 21. 21. Divide by two. Divide by two. There's a problem there. Hardship of raising a family. You're a father, you're a mother, a single father, a single parent. You are raising up a family. Or you can be together, husband and wife. Psst. School children, fees, books, homework. You tell them, do homework. They are busy with a headphone, just shaking himself. <laughs> eh? Yes. Why this? Where's the book? No, I am just now on break. Break every time. <laughs> Hardship of raising up. Hmm. Verbal abuse in homes. Verbal abuse. Silent treatment. If they speak hurtful words of insult. Hurtful words of insult. Hurtful. And that word will be stuck on you for months or years. Minor inconveniences. Annoyances. You know, at home, there are a lot of annoyances. Hello? Unless you people are already in heaven. There are a lot, plenty of annoyances. You are a man, you come, you walk into your house. She takes the meal from mac the macro oven. You see, she's taking from the macro oven, but she brings it to you and it's cold. Annoyances. Tell her lever. Emotional um, suffering. There are people here right now. You have an upsetting dream. The dream you had last night has upset you. You are here. This dream also. Ah. Ah. Why is a dream upsetting you? You are suffering with your own dream. I, 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 I'll share here reasons for suffering. There are about eight, but I'm not going to dwell on them all. I'll dwell with something that is not part of the eight so that you become more upset. <laughs> okay, why do reasons for suffering? Okay, but they are deeper. I'm only looking at the titles now. 
Why do good people suffer? That's the question. You look at yourself as a good person. I go to church. I do this and that and that. But there are reasons for suffering. Number one, out of divine love. Did you know that? Uh -uh. So you thought suffering was all from what? That's I say, when we understand this fully, the confusion will leave us. You can suffer out of divine love. love. And you know it. But you people don't know. Oh, if he's a man of God. Oh, if he's a Christian. Oh, you judge too quickly. What you are saying about that person's suffering, did it come as revelation to you? Or just society? Shallow Christian mentality. Out of divine love, we shall come to that God permitting. Number two, reasons for suffering. As a test, so that you be rewarded more Test. Suffering. Just as a test. Hmm. Yes. You lady. Yes. Thank you for the opportunity, Daddy. Um, this has enlightened me because for me, I think the perception I had about suffering was all suffering is of the devil. No, my daughter. If all suffering is of devil, then God has left everything to the devil to do. Huh? And you're a Christian and he leaves you to devil. Out of divine love. God and Satan having discussion. God loved Job. He tells him, have you seen Job? That's divine love. God mentioning your name. <laughs> Tell your neighbor. God <laughs> mentioning your name. Ah. So please reset your mind today. All right? Thank you, Daddy. As a test. Abraham, do you really love me? Yes. Abraham, do you really love me? Sacrifice your son. Hey! <laughs> Tell the <neighbor. laughs> Abraham, do you really love me? Yes. Abraham, do you really love me? Sacrifice your son. A lot of us, when it comes to test, we fail. More so test of money. <laughs> you are the only one who can see what is needed here at Holy Land. But you say, no, there, we are many. No, no, we are not many. It's only you can, who can see that deficit. So God is speaking to you. That's your test. Do that quietly and you see. Because it's when you pass the test. Okay, I'll talk to it, to it about next week. Number three. Reasons for suffering. Please don't go in this category. Tell your neighbor. Please don't go into this category. Which prophet is about to say. Which the prophet is about to say. Hey. <laughs> reasons for suffering number three as a result of divine vengeance don't ever go there divine vengeance in the beginning this was only reserved for the outer completely evil people. It was for them. But now, 
even you who is moderate, you are going towards it. Divine vengeance. Ah. And that's the time he said, let's pray overnight. Lord, Lord, anoint, what? Lift. You can't even design. This is divine vengeance. Do something else, you people, rather than saying what and what. Let God's anger finish on this one. Hello? I don't think there's anyone here who is there yet. Unless you're asking for it. <laughs> Number four. Suffering, reason for suffering is to encourage a person to repent. That's all. You have lost your business, you have lost your wife, you have lost everything. It's only you. Then God said, repent. Then after repenting, he restores everything. Can't you see? But at that particular time when you are not repenting, you are enjoying what you are doing, God says, okay, I, 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 I will do something. Losing things is normal. Because those are the things you love, so God takes them away. So that you repent quickly. Number five. Suffering comes as an atonement for one's misdeeds. So four and five are not the same. N number four is to encourage a person to repent. Number five, an, as an atonement for one's misdeeds. God granting time, we shall look at each and every one of them. Number six, as you suffer because you are a liability for others. Ha! Do you remember? Number six, you suffer because you are a liability for others. Yes. You will suffer. Number seven. You suffer as a preparation for the messianic era. And I doubt if we, are, we have reached there. Number seven. Uh, eh? Speak. Number seven, you suffer as a preparation for the messianic era. Preparing the coming of the Lord. Have you seen? Now, when you see one, two, seven, why are you suffering? Is it all seven or just because of point seven? You are suffering because of the messianic era. <laughs> Ask. <laughs> is it all seven or it's just because of point seven? Mm. You are suffering for the messianic era. Hello. Pastor Emmanuel. The seven reasons here. Why we suffer? Uh, thank you, Prophet. Uh, I'm still baffled, but uh, as I try, I can say and hope that maybe I'm not yet there on the third one, but this other, and the seventh one, I'm not too sure. The messianic era. I was still trying to really figure out myself where do I fit in here. Yeah, the third one is the seventh. Uh, the first years I can believe that uh, <coughs> because God loves me, there are things that I'm going through that I can say, yes, it's because now I understand this, this love of God. 
But uh, this needs time, Prophet, to be honest with you, for me to really <laughs> dig deep on this. Okay, one. thank you so much. Thank you, Prophet. Can you see, in the course of the week, instead of saying, oh, I'm going to have, what do you call it? Quiet time. But all these I knew. You, you are in quiet time under suffering. And you don't know why you are suffering. And you are want quiet time. It will be trouble time. You want to come out of it quickly. Thank you so much. Huh? Now, this one is good. The last one, even if you can stone me, I'm ready. Because I'm preaching, I'm, I'm teaching the last one, and anything is possible. When I look here, with just natural eye. All your suffering is because of your negligence. All of you. All of you. No one here can say it's divine. It's negligence. Negligence. Sit quiet for some time. You are suffering due to your negligence. It has got no purpose at all. But it's just sheer foolish negligence. This is a suffering that you and I bear sorrowly as a result of our own negligence. Tell your neighbor, 99 people die by negligence, only one by the hand of God. 99 people die by negligence, only one by the hand of God. Again, please. 99 people die by negligence, only one by the hand of God. Yes, sir. I, I can see you here. Because I can see you are deep in thought. Thank you, Prophet. Ignorance has been a, a very big part of my life. Because sometimes you see something, believing is possible with your own personal eyes, without vision. Thank you. Yes, lady. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much, Prophet. I'm just realizing that all that I've been going through is just my own negligence. My own foolish negligence. You are failing to put finance together. You are failing to speak to that one. You are failing to go there. You are failing to have peace. You are failing in the house, you are a visitor. Your own house. Why? You are neglecting this home. How comfortable are you? I can't hear you. Mrs. Matthew. Thank you. Good afternoon, Dad. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm not comfortable at all, and I've always been um, avoiding the fact that uh, my suffering is out of my negligence. So when you nailed it, something just my heart started pumping because it's something that I didn't want to hear. 
Yeah, you didn't want to hear that. Yes. You, yeah, you wanted to blame Satan. Oh, God. Thank you. Thank you, Ted. Most of our troubles are due to our own negligence, not to suffering. Say it. Most of our troubles are due to our own negligence, not to suffering. No. Your troubles are not because of suffering. No, you're lying. Most of your troubles come from what you cause yourself. Hey. No, amen. <laughs> Most of your troubles come from what you cause yourself. Look your life. Put it on the screen. You'll see that you are not suffering because of suffering. The troubles that you have is negligence. For example, some of you are going to work tomorrow. You, one person tells you what they are passing through with another person at work. You get involved in a dispute. Is it yours? Tell your neighbor. <laughs> Ask your neighbor, is it your dispute? Is it your dispute? Why do you get involved in other people's disputes? Who told you you are Solomon? Some of you here, you, you got all people's disputes here. Oh, I, I'm going to find out from that one now. I'm going, even now, to go in the prayer center under the shade alone, you can't. You just, let me go and find out. Uh, you're suffering. Is it number four? Here. And to make it worse, even your family members are now involved. So it has now gone to another generation. Okay. How, we, how do we calculate generation? From the time of inception to the time you die, generation. Don't confuse your generation with the wilderness generation. <laughs> that was wilderness generation. And God was specific. He says, anyone above the age of 20, they should die. Wilderness generation. generation. What causes some of the people's troubles or suffering? Overindulging in food. Laugh louder. Because you thought it was not a problem. Mm. What causes suffering? Over indulging in intimacy. From one person to another, from one over indulging in what? Intimacy. Break time. Rest. This will give you suffering, this. It's not a form of punishment. There should be purpose for intimacy, but not overindulging. You are quiet. 
Or taking dangerous risks to become wealthy. There it is. Majority of people here are broke. This is where you belong. Taking what? Dangerous risks to become wealthy. Yes. There is this, join this, join this. We are meeting there. We are meeting there, put 500, put 5,000. Now you are broke. Even your schemes, you are planning to become rich. No. You, you are inviting trouble, suffering, suffering. Now is December now, you are suffering already. Because you don't know how to go to your village. Because at village, they said you are a millionaire. So you're not sleeping well. Dangerous risks to become wealthy. It's not necessary. The worst thing about what I'm talking about is God will not perform a miracle to save a person who conducts himself without logic. So all these things that you have done, don't wait for God's miracle. No. That's why you are rushing to have, what is this, lotto. No, you can't. You are not the type. <laughs> no, you can't. You are just wasting the little money you have. Just, just buy sugar and go home. <laughs> Proverbs 19, verse 3. Proverbs 19, verse 3. The foolishness of a man twists his way, and his heart frets against the Lord. Again. Proverbs 19, verse 3. The foolishness of a man twists his way, and his heart frets against the Lord. Prophet Philip Banda's interpretation. A man's own blinder causes his ways to fail, but his heart blames God. A man's own blinder, it's here, causes his ways to fail. But his heart blames God. You are blaming God right now. Not your blinders. Your blinders are causing you all these things. Suffering resulting from negligence accounts for most human suffering. Negligence. Examples? Can I give examples? One who suffers from various ailments as a result of negligence to take care of his body. This body, you have to take care of it yourself. It's not your husband. It's not your wife. It's not your teacher. It's not Prophet Banda. Why are you failing to take care of your body? For example, overeating. Sometimes, eating foods empty of nutritional value. The food you are eating has got no nutritional value, but look how you are loading your tummy. This thing will have effect. This, this is negligence. So when you see somebody eating something, 
with no nutritional value, tell them it's what? Negligence. When you have saved, meal is finished. You find somebody in the fridge. You tell them what? Negligence. Negligence. You are eating now. Smoking. Whether green or white. <laughs> Alcohol abuse. Alcohol. Lack of exercise. You are neglecting your body. And symptoms can show that this one doesn't train. Eat. No nutritional value. Eat again. <sighs> exercise. Walk. Climb a mountain. Fast. Fasting. When you are fasting, you got something in your pocket. <laughs> Number two, negligence. One who falls ill, yet refrains from seeing a physician or neglects to follow the doctor's instructions. That's negligence. We are told now, two meters apart, wear a mask in, wherever you go. Water. Now, if you don't like those, you are negligent. And don't think God will come through for you. No. Number three. One who out of laziness cannot hold a job. Or find a suitable means of income. And because of that, they can't hold a job. They can't find suitable means of income. They are poverty stricken. That's negligence. That's neg there, there's no Satan there. Poverty stricken. Yes, my daughter. So far, how are you feeling? Thank you, Dad, for the opportunity. Um, seeing how most of my life I've been very careless. And I am uncomfortable with the message because I would have liked it if Prophet was saying, number one, four, and five were the reason I'm suffering. But when the prophet clarifies negligence. Even if I hide, I can find myself there. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful for the message. I think Amen. it's time for change. Amen. May we know you when you are walking to know whether you are coming or going. Not, we can see movement. But is this front or back? Negligence. Number four, one who is proud and consistently has his feelings hurt as he feels people do not give him the respect he deserves. This person is negligent. He will continue suffering because of pride and you want and you feel hurt. That one, that one, no, 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 not that one. The problem is you. The problem is you, please. Because you want people to respect you, command, you demand respect. Because of pride. Because of your office work. At office. When you enter office, oh, he's in. Director is in. Hey, he's in. She's in. You will suffer. God is seeing. Number five. I 
How comfortable are we? Show by your hand whether good or I want huh? I want to see <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah, this It's bad. Can you see? All this time we are blaming who? And God has never, it has not even crossed his mind to bring vengeance upon you. Never. It has not crossed his mind. You can't handle it. Number five. One who is easy to anger. Easy to anger. As a result, suffers great marital strife. Whether the wife angers quickly, whether the husband angers quickly, here there's strife in this home. They don't start a discussion and finish. They always end up having heated dispute and other worse circumstances, even touching body. Going to the kitchen, taking bread knife. Now you want your partner to be your bread. <laughs> you have missed it. You have missed it. Go to buy in town bread. Tell them to cut it up already. And if you see your partner anger easily with bread knife, take all knife in the house. Away. Have it sliced bread, meat, everything. Wherever you are buying. <laughs> Number six. Number six is very silly, but true. One who finds himself or herself in a dangerous place, but does not run away. I can't hear. You are guilty. I say, you are guilty. You know this is now becoming dangerous. But he say, hey, leave me. Hey, leave me. Leave you. He has already started touching you. I thought you should start running. <laughs> this is negligence. Can't you see? It's what? Negligence. And it has got nothing to do with God. And all the consequences, you are going to bear them. Oh, there's nothing of God. There's nothing of Satan. Nothing. You can pray as much as you want. Nothing will change. Are you listening you? Uh? Are you listening? What? I'm hearing the message. And, that what? Uh, that um, what I'm going through, Dad, yeah. has been the cause of my own decisions. Negligence. Yes, Dad. You are in a dangerous place. You can't run away. You are a boss in the office. The lady come with short, short here. And you say you are Samson, now stand.
negligence. Number seven, that is thinking to those who got a little bit of material. Listen very carefully. Num number seven. No number seven. You are really in trouble with number seven. Number seven has crippled nearly everyone who speaks English and they drive a car. Everyone, except those whom God said, watch them. One who shows off blessings he has been graced with. Tell your neighbor. One who shows off blessings he has been graced with. I can't hear you. One who shows off blessings he has been graced with. This is considered a form of negligence because through this he causes others to be jealous of him. He causes others to be jealous of him. Bad news because negligence, the suffering of negligence does not atone. Speak, please, sir, madam. Please. The suffering of negligence does not atone. No atonement. It's negligence. Your car was meant for your family, but see where you have gone. Making other people fume. And you think God is happy? I thought this was yours, and keep it. Keep it. I think, I thought everything was grace to you, by grace of God. Why, why this peacock? Why? What can you say? Negligence, no atonement, it only brings harm. That's the harm you're experiencing now. And you say people are jealousy, people are envious, people are doing... No, 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 no. <laughs> Don't rush there. Yes, please. Uh, thank you, Daddy. Thank uh, you. This is a very, very, very good message, and it's hard to swallow. And uh, I've found myself in many things that I've done, and I'm still even on other things that I'm trying to do that is causing me to find myself where I am. And I think I, I still have a chance to stop some that I want to do. Thank you, Sonny. Yeah. This is messianic message for people to say, ah, 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 ah. Because this is a message that prepare people for genuine blessing. Genuine. Because when you have been blessed genuinely, there's no peacock. You know, you have been graced. This could have gone to that one. This could have gone to that one. It's not to what you think. Yes, that. Eh? Yes, that, that no atonement. Just stopping. 
No atonement. You can't pray this. Out, out. Which out? Negligence. Rebuking negligence. Negligence come out of me. Ah. You're on green. You're smoking green and it's hot now. This poverty should have a reason. But you can't explain you how, how you found yourself like that. There's no redeeming factor to the suffering person on account of his own negligence. There's no redeeming factor. There's no redeeming factor, factor to the suffering person on account of his, his own negligence. negligence, his own laziness, his own stupidity. All three, write them. Don't, don't leave out stupidity. <laughs> Let's all read together. One, two, three. There is no redeeming factor to the suffering of a person on account of his own negligence, his own laziness, his own stupidity. God loves us. Such suffering ruins a person's life. Such suffering ruins a person's life. That is. Ruined. Our negligence in fulfilling our responsibility only brings harm. Our negligence in fulfilling our responsibilities only brings harm. Harm. It's your own negligence. Our life. Our life. See how you've been neglecting your own life. Question. What types, because suffering has got many types, what types of suffering are you experiencing right now in your life? What types of suffering are you experiencing in your life right now? Types. I close here. Deuteronomy twenty nine twenty nine. Deuteronomy twenty nine twenty nine. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. I sign off. Again, sir, I sign off. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. The secret things belong to the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed 
belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. It has been revealed. It's no longer secret. It's no longer secret. What has not been revealed here belong to God Almighty. And he knows. What type of suffering? Because you just, your people just, hey, hey, you don't even know what you're saying. You think God is confused. What type of sufferings are you experiencing right now in your life? There's no atonement for What can you say about the whole lecture? Thank you very much, Prophet. For me, the, it, when you said you should ask the purpose of suffering, and what that said to me is that we ask the wrong questions most of the time. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we will never get the right answers, and we'll be circling around in problems. Toko, Zida. Thank you so much, Dad, for the teaching. 99% um, of my sufferings are because of my negligence. Look, God said in his word, tithe I'll give you. You, that's the first thing you fail. But you go and start fasting for blessing. Is, did he say when you fast, I'll bless you? <clears throat> Negligence. Where you work, instead of telling the employer, there's a loophole here, money is going out, you are pocketing it. This is what? God is saying. Because this is a test. Don't think you are clever. No. There's no atonement. What do you say, my daughter? Hmm? Thank you, Dad. Uh, thank you for the teaching, Dad. Most of my problems is because of negligence. Today, in fact, all aspects of my life. When I look at my finances, it's negligence. When I look at my spiritual life, it's negligence. Mm -hmm. When I look at my health, it's negligence. Today, Dad, you have, me, you have given me redemption. Because I've been pointing so many things. I've been pointing at so many people. And I've failed to point at myself. And it is the little things that I do arrogantly and out of negligence that has led to big problems today. Uh, when you look at money today, I decide, let me just have KFC today. Tomorrow I decide, let me have Nando's. When I'm broke, I don't look at those small negligence that I was doing throughout the week. Now come month end, the money that I've spent is more than the money that I receive. So my income is more than my my expenditure is more than, than my income. And thank you, Dad, so much. And it's one of the things I think I've overlooked. Thank you, Dad. Thank you so much. Yes, Sonny. Very good speech. Thank you, my girl. She has analyzed it. Hey, sweet here. Hey, party here. Hey, there's wedding here. Take this one out, put another one. Hey, shoe. This one is not a good one. This one is a good one. Three times in a month. 
and you are the same person you want to buy a house. You are joking. You are joking. There's no, there's nothing. You are playing around here. Your life is just nothing. You are a good talker. Yes. Thank you, Prophet, for the opportunity. Uh, you started first by saying there is no shame in admitting ignorance. That is. That's where I started from. Because all this, your blunder is because you want to look clever. You know. What do you know? What do you know? You can be walking barefoot, but you got your own house in your own name. You can wear latest clothes, but you go to a rented house. Foolishness. Continue, please. Uh, this has taught me that actually I am shame myself before I admit my ignorance. My life is actually a shame. And uh, looking at the last verse that you uh, gave us, Prophet, and you said you sign off. Yes. After the message, after the, past, uh, the scripture was read, you said everything has been said here. What has not been said belongs to God. Yes. You have given us knowledge. You have given us understanding. We have been exposed. All I can say is my prayer is may God give me wisdom to follow your teaching and to put your teaching into practice. That's Thank all. you. That's all. Very wise son. is coming. Then that's when you realize that you never knew him. To all that, all those who who received him. He gave them power to become sons of God. You don't become a child of God minus power of God to become his child. This is not academic. It's coming. He was, he's coming. world around you, you're educated. Show me peace. That's the first thing he said. War, room of war, flood, fear, lawlessness, everything is there. Why is it in when the Russians have been taken, you see what will happen. It will depend now whether you are Russians, you or not. I leave that to your conscience. Your conscience is your personal judge. Even all this that you are claiming. It's your choices. It's your desires. It's your cravings. It has got nothing to do with kingdom. It has got nothing to do with kingdom kingdom. I'll leave you here unless there is a question. I wrote a message. You can ask me a question. Don't ask anyone. I'm available. Look how Jesus used to teach. Disciples were saying, look how beautiful this Tabernacle is. Jesus keep quiet. He says, ah, 
you look at this. No stone will remain on top of each other. That's what is happening here now. Parable and secret. Secret, you know what it is and you, don't, you tell a lie. That's secret. Parable. Is something else. Parable is what? Parable is not a secret. For those at, uh, okay, we saying bye bye. See you next week. You can go home. Think about these things and uh, meditate about these things and uh, God is merciful but on negligence there is no nothing Neglig you stop yourself it's not prayer because in, you, you, are, you are doing it on purpose yourself so how can there be redemption it's you. Say, ah, no, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. It's you. Why are you like that? You are bent over now. Thank you, Prophet, for this grace. This, this teaching you have taught today, you, you have really waking me up. Negligence was part of my life. Every day, that was what was bringing me down. And I'm, I'm grateful to be here today. And my wife have been here. Everything you are teaching, because all this you are teaching is from my, our own house. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I thank God that she came today to hear this gospel. Thank you, Mrs. Son of my... The wife of my son. Long time. Thank, huh? you, Thank you, Prophet. It's good to be here. Amen. I love the environment, the environment and the teaching of the Prophet. Um, I would like to say what you have taught us today. It's actually happening into my life and my kids' life and my husband's life. It's really happening. Right now, I'm suffering because of negligence. I've neglected um, so many people around me. I cannot go back to fix what I've done. No. Never. But for me being here, I'm hoping all is well. No. Yeah, I'm okay. So I don't know what to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be upon you. May he grant you understanding and strength. May he bless you for generations. May he give you peace, Amen. calmness, Amen. to overcome. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Shalom. Thank you. There's time for prayer center there to look at this message. Lord, I